Good afternoon. I'd like to call the order call to order the meeting of the Oklahoma City Water Utilities Trust. First order of business is to approve the minutes of the October 24th, 2017 meeting, and I'd recognize a motion to that effect. It's been moved. Second. It's moved and seconded. Vote. It's approved. We have a consent docket. Move the consent docket subject to individual consideration. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any comments or any requests for individual consideration? Seeing none, we'll vote. Approved. The concurrence docket is next. I'd move the concurrence docket. Second. It's been moved and seconded. We'll vote. Approved. We have a couple of items for individual consideration. First is a resolution recommending the City of Oklahoma City adopt an ordinance amendment to implement updated surcharge limits to industrial users discharging to the city's wastewater collection system. Is there a motion? Well, can we get a little discussion? explanation on it? Okay. Mr. Chairman, Crystal Kowalik is here to give you a briefing. She is our water, our wastewater quality superintendent. Hello, Chairman, trustees. Uh, we've, you guys have recently seen uh, this, well, actually about a year ago, not that recent. Um, before we sent it to council, we had some questions about the tier one and tier two. So we made, we went back and reevaluated the tier one and tier, tier two for BOD and TSS and determined that it really didn't have an effect at the wastewater treatment plants. So it's the same items that you've seen before without the tier one and tier two separation. So BOD, TSS, ammonia, all of those limits are staying the same. There are some minor changes on the metals where we've lowered the concentration. So about 30 notice of violations we had last year. If we would have had these lower limits, we would have had approximately four more. So is there any questions? That's just a quick summary. Questions? Yeah, second, that was helpful. Been moved and seconded. Any other questions? Any questions? Seeing none, we'll vote. Approved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item B under the items for individual consideration deals with the press presentation to the Atoka Dam spillway and the shoot rehabilitation. Mr. Chairman, Larry Hare is here with our engineering department to give us an update on the uh, Atoka Dam spillway uh, design. Uh, so he will give you an update on some of the um, modifications that are proposed in the uh, increase in the amendment for the contract that will come up next. I'm just waiting for the screen to come down so I can join you in this presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Browning, for the introduction. Um, here's the Atoka Dam. I'm going to give you a brief history of the dam, uh, where we are today with it. Uh, the dam was built in 1959. It's an earthen dam. The top of the dam elevation is at 600 uh, feet above sea level. The spillway is at 590 feet uh, above uh, sea level. That gives you like a 10-foot uh, freeboard. In, after the great drought in 2010, 2011, 2012, we had the great flood in 2015. Uh, that was an approximately a 100-year event where the peak lake level reached 596.4. During that uh, uh, flooding, we reached about an estimated discharge of about 404 million gallons per hour, which pretty much destroyed the stilling basin downstream. It also took away a good portion of our chute and uh, damaged the spillway. So uh, we hired Freezing Nichols in order to uh, take a look at it, assess what needs to be done, and uh, uh, design of repair rehabilitation. So the state criteria for uh, dam spillways is that it, 
uh, they are required to pass 75% of the probable maximum flood, whereas the current uh, configuration of the spillway and the chute at the dam, we can only pass around 32%. During the preliminary analysis, Friesen Nichols uh, came up with a, uh, a labyrinth type design for uh, this new spillway to, and to widen the chute and to raise the top of the dam uh, to about six and a half feet. Upon further computer analysis, it, it was found that uh, the, because of the submergence of the design flood of the labyrinth dam, all of the benefits seen by it will be uh, taken away. And so. They revised the design and recommendation to an OG weir, which is basically what we have. It's just now that we are uh, modifying the shape of it to allow more water to go over it. Um, we're also going to still be widening the chute and uh, rehabilitating, rehabilitating the uh, stilling basin and raising the dam an additional foot and a half to seven and a half feet. In order to raise the dam, we're looking at uh, kind of like a two-wall system where it would be more of a retaining wall. That will prevent us from actually piling on more dirt on top of the dam and going over the bench right here, which is a huge cost savings because you don't have all of that dirt on the back side of the dam to, 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 to deal with. And it also maintains the center line of the existing roadway. A physical model was built at the University of Utah to help uh, uh, kind of like tweak the design of the uh, dam and the spillway. Um, this is what it looks like over here. This area here represents the lake. Here is the new spillway right here, as well as the uh, widened chute and the new stilling basin, which is right here. During the uh, modeling, uh, they Friesen Nichols came up with a solution to uh, provide you know, the maximum amount of flow to go over the dam with a good factor of safety. The only problem was is that in the modeled session, the water had a great big swirl effect out in this area, which would threaten to inundate our pump station and the city of Atoka's pump station, especially since the city of Atoka's pump station is at a lower elevation than our pump station. So they came up with a uh, a benched wall system made of rolled compacted concrete, uh, whoops, which can be found, uh, which you can see kind of right here in this area. And that will help divert the water to go into a more straight pattern and go further downstream. In uh, coming up with the, the dike or the rolled comp concrete wall, we all we had to deal with about 10 acres of drainage local runoff, which would also threaten to inundate the uh, city of Atoka's pump station. So we figured out uh, to get rid of about six acres of that runoff, we would put a, a diversion ditch right here through the new wall. And after conferring with the city of Atoka, uh, we also came up with a solution to build a wall around their facility and driveway with a sump system so that in these events, uh, the water will just rush around them and build up around the wall and they can pump out you know, whatever local water is inside the uh, area. So we're going to be raising the dam at 607, or to a new elevation of 607.5. The spillway will remain at 590. Um, we have an existing dike or berm, what do you have you, at elevation 602, which would prevent water in high flows from going out and spilling over onto Highway 69 and possibly into the city of Atoka. So when we're raising the dam level, we will also have to raise the dam, the level of this south dike. Raising the, da the height of the dam and the height of the berm does not increase the capacity, does not increase the amount of water we hold in the lake. It only holds back the amount of flood water uh, required by the state because the spillway still remains at uh, five, 590. So that's, a, that's our safety valve, let's say. Here's a representation of where the, south, the, the existing south dike is. And in order to raise it would entail 
another problem of, of building it uh, more dirt on top of it. And if we were to go further north, we would start covering up uh, our existing pipeline. If we were to build it to the south, we would start endangering a wetland area right here. So in order to avoid both of those issues, uh, we came up with the idea to just build a new dike around everything in order to get away with all of that, get away from all of that. Oh, wrong way. So where do you get all of this dirt in order to build the top of the dam and the top of the dike? Fries and Nichols came up with two areas uh, here on the southeast part of the lake, uh, one being the preferred area here on the east side of the lake road and one over here uh, just to the uh, north of it. So similar to what we did in the pump station rehabilitation project back in 2010 to 2012, we have to, we're going to have to close access to the south part of the lake on this road but northern, uh, access to the northern part can become from the northern part to still access the playground and this uh, boat ramp right here. And we are anticipating about a 15-month uh, construction period with which this road will have to be uh, closed. And I will entertain any questions. Any questions? Yes, sir. Roughly $30 million. We're using SRF funds for this. Any other questions? Recognize a motion. Move we uh, uh, approve the amendment to the contract. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? We'll vote. Approved. Thank you. Are there any items from trustees? General Manager report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first off, we have a presentation from PFM on the uh, commercial paper program. Good afternoon. I'm Dennis Whaley with PFM. We're the financial advisor to uh, Aqua. Uh, you should have a paper copy of the presentation in front of you as well as it's on the uh, overhead. Um, talk a little bit about your commercial paper program. Start on page two with a quick history. Uh, we started a commercial paper program for Aqua in 2006 with a $75 million program. Uh, the commercial paper program provides short-term financing, uh, and we'll talk a little bit later about how it avoids uh, long-term financing costs when you're only using money uh, in, in certain intervals. On July 5 of 2016, the letter of credit was increased to $200 million to help us begin the Atoka Pipeline Project. So the next steps we have over the next few months is determine the timing and size of the letter of credit as we ramp up uh, the construction of the pipeline. So going to page three, we have a, a letter of credit that provides liquidity to the program. And what that is, is when commercial paper rolls, Aqua does not have to use its money. Uh, liquidity is provided by State Street. The current letter of credit expires in 2019. You have the highest short-term ratings on your program, P1 and A1 Plus by Moody's and S&P. Uh, Moody's does not have a plus behind there, so it's, it's as high as it goes. Um, Long-term ratings of Aquit are AAA, AAA by Moody's and S&P. Um, you know, this speaks very highly of the trustees and the staff of Aquit. Uh, the rating agencies have talked about uh, the excellent financial metrics coverage, cash on hand, long-term financial planning, and the strength of the strength and experience of the management of Aquit. Page four, why do we use CP? Very low borrowing rates compared to long-term rates. You do not have to fund a debt service reserve fund. You do not have negative arbitrage, which is what I was talking about earlier, where you borrow money at 4%, you invest it at 50 basis points, and then you spend it down over this long period of time. 
uh, to use commercial paper, you just borrow it as you need it for your project. And then at the bottom is what you currently have outstanding. So we did a little bit of homework and tried to come up with what, what kind of savings have you generated from using your commercial paper program. And if you assume that right now our all-in cost is about 140 and the long-term bond index is at 386, you have saved or you have not incurred about 152,000 in negative arbitrage for every $10 million issued. And we did another calculation that went back to 2006 when the program began. And over the, the life of the program, our estimate is, is by using CP instead of borrowing long-term and just holding cash, it saved Aquid about $10 million, which is pretty impressive. Page six, um, <clears throat> just give you a, a look going back to 96 of, of bond rates and all this pages here to show you, uh, although rates are off their, their, their all-time lows, uh, we continue to enjoy very low borrowing rates. Page seven, uh, a 10-year finance strategy was done. And the next step is to look at when do we need to increase the commercial paper capacity to help with the Atoka pipeline project. And the graph at the bottom shows that right now we're in, of course, very good shape with 200 million. You only have about 8 million outstanding, so a lot of capacity under that. But then in 2019, if the, if the project goes as expected, we're looking at needing to ramp up to about 225 million. And then on 2021 20, and 22, we'll need to ramp up a little more as the, as the project really gets into full gear. And very importantly to y'all on page eight, are we, is the program in compliance with all of uh, our requirements? Uh, and the answer is yes. Um, <clears throat> you are legally authorized from the last time the trustees uh, reauthorized the program to issue $400 million in debt. Uh, at this point, we've only issued about 62 million, so we have remaining authorization under that of a little over 300 million. Uh, we mentioned you have a 200 million letter of credit. We only have seven and a half million outstanding, so much, quite a bit of room there. And then you're required to have funding for any program you authorize. So if, even if you don't fund it through the CP program, you have to have some kind of funding source before you let a contract. So between CP outstanding and contracts that remain to be funded of about $30 million, you still have $163 million worth of authorization. So we're in good shape on all fronts as far as the commercial paper program. And then the last page is just to give you an update on the debt outstanding for Aquit. Uh, McGee Creek uh, were some bonds that were issued in 1992, and they will pay off in 2022. Something that's been out there a very, very long time. Uh, thank you for your time. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, next item is the status report. Uh, the lakes are um, about like they were last month. Uh, Overholzer, Hefner, and Canton are full. Um, Draper is about seven and a half feet down. Uh, Atoka is dropping a little bit because we're moving water from Atoka up to Draper to, to maintain the, the status of the, of the lake uh, at just about uh, this, the same level every, every day when we withdraw. So it's about two and a half feet down and McGee Creek is about a foot down. So that's the status of the, of the reservoirs. Uh, the next item we have on here, uh, we're, we're on a roll this month, we won another award. Very good. Uh, we were at the governor's uh, water conference last week, and uh, Mallory Gosher is here to uh, give us the details. Good afternoon. I'm a little bit shorter than everybody else. Um, I'm so excited to be here and tell you a little bit more about the Oklahoma Water Resources Board uh, Water for 2060 Excellence Award. 
Um, this program is the first year that the OWRB put on um, the Water for 2060 award, and we're really proud that uh, we won. They recognized entities um, taking steps towards water conservation and efficiency um, throughout the whole state. And um, so it was a great honor for us to be recognized for that. And it was presented by Julie um, Cunningham, the OWRB um, Executive Director, and Michael Teague, the Secretary of Energy and Environment. And so we're really just looking forward to continuing our water conservation and efficiency programs and outreach. And um, so this has really just been a good honor. And I have the word here to show you. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, that's the end of my report. Thank you. Are there any decisions to be heard? Seeing none, we're adjourned.